you're constantly looking for the one, then you're going to try to fit people into that role that shouldn't necessarily be there. Um, and so whether they leave with a wrapped up bow where you have all of the closure ever, or they leave by their, their silence, uh, they don't belong to you. And that is a part of where our society has failed us in some ways because the, the, the way that we view relationship is I need to get you. And once I get you, you belong to me. Therefore, you can't look at other people. You can't talk to other people. You can't experience X, Y, or Z. And I need you to validate me and my existence. Blessings and blessings, beautiful people. If you've been ghosted or lied to in the dating world, this video, this podcast, this transmission, this ceremony is for you. Now, I want to start by saying that uh, this term, ghosted, I don't like the term. I understand the term, but I don't like it. And here's why. The setup of I've been ghosted assumes that it's about you. It assumes that there's something bad or fundamentally flawed or wrong about you. And oftentimes, when someone doesn't respond to someone in a timely manner, right? Because we have, all of us have these shoulds that live inside of us. He should, she should, gender nine binary should, they all should. They should do it like this. You should drive like this. You should eat like this. By the way, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. When people eat, and especially when it's quiet, and it sounds like like war, like, like, like that. I want to take these knuckles and punch them in the throat. Uh, now I would obviously not do that because I'm clearly spiritual and superior. Uh, and that's a joke as well. Uh, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, besides that, the point is, is that we have all these shoulds and all these of courses living in our body. And what we don't often understand is that people's responses to relationship are, they vary depending on where they were raised, who were they, they were raised by who, where they were raised, who raised them, what kind of schooling they went to, what the bullies did and didn't do, what their sisters or brothers did and didn't do. There's so many things that play a part in why people uh, have different responses to uh, social interactions. Uh, an example would be, I would and could be considered someone who's socially awkward. And what I mean by that is it's very hard for me to do small talk. I have this best friend named Brown Andrews. And every time Brown and I used to go out when we were kids, like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I would be so astonished at how he could charm people by talking about the dumbest things ever. And for me, they were dumb. For him, they were small talk, right? It's like, how's the weather? How's the kids? How's this? How's that? And I'm like, mm, that's let's just go deep or let's not talk at all. Um, so everybody has different viewpoints and perspectives. However, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. So the first thing I want to acknowledge outside of me not liking the term ghosted is, of course, you have expectations and shoulds. A lot of people, especially in the dating world, are constantly looking for they're one. And if you're constantly looking for the one, then you're going to try to fit people into that role that shouldn't necessarily be there. Um, and so whether they leave with a wrapped up bow where you have all of the closure ever, 
or they leave by their their silence, uh, they don't belong to you. And that is a part of where our society has failed us in some ways because the 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 way that we view relationship is I need to get you. And once I get you, you belong to me. Therefore, you can't look at other people. You can't talk to other people. You can't experience X, Y, or Z. And I need you to validate me and my existence. Now, that goes so far back. That goes back to being a good little boy and a good little girl for mommy and daddy. When you listened, they gave you time, energy, toys, attention, et cetera, et cetera. When you didn't listen, they took those things away. So a lot of us, and I'm including myself here, grew up learning to perform for love. And therefore, here you go again in this dating scenario where more than likely some of your masks showed up. Some of your tendencies to try to control that which cannot be controlled showed up. And people have different experiences to that. Um, I'm not blaming you because you did the best you could with the tools and consciousness you had available. However, I am giving you perspective as to why someone may step away and or not feel safe enough to tell you the truth. I have a friend right now going through a breakup and um, we were coaching him on it. And, you know, for the most part, the group was saying, hey, just, just speak about you and where you are. Don't share about why you're actually leaving um, or like share the parts that you're why you're actually leaving but but the parts that don't involve her and I took another stance on that I said I think you should definitely share that now there's timing right you don't want to just uh, quote unquote beat a dead horse and I don't even understand where that even came from whoever beat a dead horse like who did that why um, but you don't want to beat a dead horse. So if she's already feeling all the feels, maybe don't share that now. But I do think it's a gift to be able to say to somebody you spend quality time with, hey, one of the reasons why I'm leaving is you're extremely irresponsible with your money. One of the reasons I'm leaving is I can't keep up with your sex drive. One of the reasons I'm leaving is, you know, your breath stinks. Whatever it is, it is. And that doesn't make them bad or wrong. It's just not a good match. It's not a, uh, it's not a match to continue. So I get it. It hurt your feelings that they didn't tell you their new truth. And this is the part that you need to hear. Because oftentimes when people go through breakups or things go down, they go, oh, screw him. He was an asshole anyway. Oh, my God. He like lied about the whole thing. Well, maybe, maybe he didn't. Maybe everything he said was true until it was no longer true. Maybe it was true until he got to know a version of you better and he or she realized that it no longer was in alignment. It doesn't excuse the behavior of giving someone 30 seconds of, hey, I no longer want to date you. I'm not excusing that. I think it's actually stupid. I think it's actually cowardice at some level. And I also understand that people don't have the somatic body nor the understanding or the consciousness to be able to share that. So what I want you to hear in all of this is to give yourself grace and compassion and to give the other person grace and compassion. Now, here's an example. And I'll do this in the like men women perspective. If a man or a young man believes that he can't win at a sport, a video game, a job, whatever you want to call it, a relationship, if he believes he can't win, if already if if within the first couple months first couple weeks first couple days there's already all of these quote unquote red flags of like yo you're <laughs> you you're going to be up against it 
that man may choose to walk away. And once again, I'm not telling you that you need to change your behavior. I'm just giving you a perspective on why some people choose to walk away. Now, there's uh, what we, and I'm doing this with you, what we believe is the right way to walk away and what we believe is the wrong way to walk away. In a perfect world, that person sends you a text and says, hey, I'm so sorry, this isn't going to work out. It's, you know, it's not you per se, um, but it's, it's us, it's our combination, and I met someone else and I need to go, right? That's a perfect world, but we often don't get that. So here's my suggestion. If someone ghosted you and you still have their number, call them and let them know. Leave a voice note and say, hey, it only takes a minute or two. I shared my body with you. I shared my energy. We shared X, Y, and Z. I'm a sentient being. Out of 7.7 billion people, we found each other. And I just want you to know that it hurt my feelings that you didn't give me the time or energy. You had enough time and energy to, to be flirting with me on all the apps and stuff like that, but not enough time to say that it doesn't work out anymore. And so I just want you to know that if you are calling someone in, right? I know it's not me, but if you are, uh, the type of woman that you're probably calling in won't believe that's a good idea. So um, thank you. I will close this for us. Um, I had a good time. Clearly, this isn't it, and that's okay too. Blessings, right? Or some version of that. Whatever it is, what I'm challenging you to do is to take your power back instead of uh, placing blame. Placing blame is so easy. Taking power, taking responsibility, next level. When you take responsibility and take the power back, you are no longer a victim to this person. Because all that happened was you are experiencing their silence, their ghosting is, is you experiencing their shame, their nervous system, and how they deal with disconnection. How your nervous system took it was rejection. And I'm sorry for that. It is not a rejection of you as a person. Quick last story. Uh, I was in India maybe 13, 14 years ago, traveling alone by myself. And in India, in certain parts, there's lots of dogs. And I was on a bus, uh, packed, packed to the brim. There was probably 200 people on a bus that should have only had 100 in it. And I was looking out the window and there's all these people just sweating on me. And I was looking out and I saw these dogs and the dogs would sort of come up to each other and some would sniff each other's butts and some wouldn't. And it was this interesting dynamic where I was noticing like, ah, this is how life is. Some people are energetically drawn to each other and some aren't. Some dogs would come together and sniff each other's butts and then go together. Some would come sniff each other's butts, keep going. Some would never even sniff each other's butts. That's us. That's you. So if you came and you sniffed each other's butts and then you kept going, that's reason, season, lifetime. The name of the game is to let go of the control that you think you have and trust that the universe has your back and it will send you exactly who you need over the span of your lifetime. Blessings and blessings. If this served you in any way, I ask that you share it. Uh, I appreciate you all and I just want you to know that you can find some amazing things at PrestonSmiles.com where I support people getting free from the inside out regardless of their external circumstances. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next episode.